Hello, I'm Gideon Haig and uh, I'm a journalist. I've been a journalist all my adult life and I've written on lots of different subjects, predominantly cricket, but, um, but other things as well. And I'm always a sucker for an interesting story, a story that takes me back through some kind of aperture in, into the past and allows me to explore the society of its period. And one of the ways to do that is by crime. A crime can reveal so much about a society, it can reveal a great deal about people's hang-ups, people's prejudices, people's preoccupations and obsessions. And one that fascinated me that I found out about a few years ago was the story of the murder of Molly Dean. Molly Dean was a young woman way ahead of her time. Uh, she was born in 1905 into a very conservative and respectable Melbourne family. Uh, she became a, a young school teacher, but what Molly wanted above all was to be a writer and was to keep the company of creative uh, people working in the arts and, and, uh, and sculpture and music and basically the, the salons of bohemianism in, uh, in Melbourne. She was gradually drawn into it in the, in the course of the 1920s. She had a series of relationships with prominent people in, uh, in the Melbourne kind of art scene. She ended up as, uh, as the mistress of a prominent Melbourne painter called Colin Coulihan. The relationship was ill-starred from the beginning. Uh, Coulihan was already married. He'd had a love child with another woman. He had a very, very rackety personal life, Coulihan. Perhaps not the kind of man that you'd invest your future in. But Molly believed very passionately in the, in the cause of art and she had very strong uh, objectives. She was in the process of writing a novel. She'd written many short stories and poems. But one night, towards what seems to be the end of the relationship that she was having with Coulihan, she was murdered, walking home from the theatre, a showing of Pygmalion at the, at the Bijou Theatre, by an unknown assailant, viciously and sadistically killed, dragged into a laneway and, and horribly abused. And the story created an immense scandal in, uh, in Melbourne tabloid culture. It was one of those crimes of the moment that somehow captivates the interests of an entire city. Because it was the first time that many people had realised that this kind of bohemian existence was led by, by fellow Melburnians. The inquest was a sensation. Uh, the story behind Molly's bizarre and uh, in involuted family, who were deeply ambivalent about her connections with unsuitable men, also raised hackles about the relationship between mothers and, uh, and children. And from the, from the point of view of, of history, it then strangely disappeared uh, and I couldn't quite understand why. I became aware of it when I was reading My Brother Jack, George Johnson's famous uh, novel. Uh, there's a subplot in it involving a, a painter and his girlfriend who are involved in a, in a kind of a murder mystery. And when I was reading that I became sort of interested in what well, wasn't, weren't aspects of, uh, of My Brother Jack drawn from life. Uh, so I did some research into Johnson's life and how he'd become aware of this story and the kind of the way in which this story was treated by other, another fictional imagination and turned from a true life story into a, into a made up story. It turned out in fact that he was not by far from the, the only author who'd taken the Molly Dean story for a run around and turned it into the, uh, the grist for his fictional mill. So that's an important part of the story as well, the kind of the afterlife of Molly Dean. Strangely, we're going through a bit of a Molly Dean renaissance in, uh, in Australia since the, uh, since the start of the 21st century. There's been a play written about her, there's been a song written about her, there's been novels in which she's featured, there's currently a whodunit in which she features as a, as a major character. It's almost as though the rest of the world, after all these years, has finally caught up with Molly Dean and we're hearing the story in her own voice for the first time. And in a way that was part of my objective here, to offer her some belated sense of restorative justice and rescue her from the oblivion into which she'd plunged. And you can order your copy at booktopia.com.au.